And I'll start with the Leap Cloud Data Server or the LCDS. So basically, this is a new system that connects Leap models to a repository of online databases that contain open source data that are relevant for model development. So the goal of the LCDS is really to simplify not only model development, but also data collection and the model maintenance by offering the users an easy way to access these international databases and to pull in country specific or technology specific data directly into your model. And also to keep the data in your model up to date as updates to these uh, databases become available. This initial version of the LCDS um, focuses on providing access to national statistics data, for example, um, hooking it up to databases like the UN Population and Urbanization Prospects, um, the UN Energy Statistics, the World Bank Development Indicators, um, GDP projections, among others. Um, in a second phase, it will also include more uh, technology-oriented data, such as data on costs of specific technologies, performance data, emission factors, and so forth. Um, we're continually identifying databases that we can link up um, through an API and include and make available through the LCDS. So if you have any suggestions or you maybe have developed databases that you would like to make available through the LCDS, please um, contact us. Um, the second feature, and I'll introduce these three features and then I'll swip, um, switch to, to leap to show you in the demonstration. But this next feature is plugins, which introduces, as Charlie mentioned, a modular architecture and a more community-based approach for developing models in Leap. So this new system um, also aims to simplify model development by allowing users to easily integrate or plug in um, sort of mini models that have been developed by different subject matter experts. These mini models include, for example, standard or suggested methodologies for modeling a particular sector or particular industry with, with suggested data structures, default data, and could even contain references to the LCDS, the cloud uh, data server. So users can um, access from a library of plugins and they can choose from anything that's in there. They could choose some plugins that maybe follow a more top-down approach for some sectors. There are others that might have a more detailed or bottom-up methods for other sectors. And this can really assist users in developing models from scratch or just providing a starting point um, to work from. And an added benefit is that when using these plugins in conjunction with the LCDS, you are importing not only a plugin with a data structure, but even with data that is um, specific to the country that you're working um, with when that data is available. And last but not least, um, this new version of Leap includes the ability, the ability to translate both the user interface, but also the data structures of your own model into multiple languages, which uh, not only improves the accessibility for users around the world, but can also really help um, improve the engagement among modelers and the stakeholders. Um, currently, this version um, has translations available in 14 languages, which include some of the major UN languages like Chinese, French, and Spanish, but also other important languages um, in Africa and Asia, such as Indonesian, Thai, Swahili, Yoruba, among others. It's worth noting that these um, user interface translations were initially developed using machine translation, but were then also manually reviewed by volunteers from the LEAP community. So a big thank you to all of the users that contributed um, to making this possible. And that said, we're always open to have um, volunteers review additional languages as well. And on the other hand, the actual data or the model itself, so everything like the names of the branches, the fuel scenario, all of that underlying data in your model can now also be translated on the fly using Google Translate. So it basically supports any, any language and it's very easy to switch back and forth between the different um, languages. 
So let me switch to Leap and I'll give you a quick demonstration of these different um, features. And I'll start with the LCDS. So I'll start here with a nearly empty Leap model that I'm developing from scratch. And if I go to the settings screen, you'll see that I've set up this model to basically just cover demand and energy effects for a single country, in this case, Costa Rica, and covering a period from 2010 to 2050 with roughly 10, 11 years of historical data. So you'll see that initially my data tree is very simple. It just contains a couple of high level branches to store key assumptions and demand, but there's really no structure or no branches underneath any of these. So usually when you start a model from scratch, one of the first things that you would do is that you would gather data on key assumptions. So things like population or GDP, things that you can then refer to um, in your model, in different parts of your model as you do projections. So let's start with adding a key assumption for population. And I'll just enter the unit as number of people. And usually what you would do is that you would have to go and search for historical and projected data for this particular country and enter it manually. So there are still a number of ways in which you can import um, time series data. So just as before, Leap all also supports um, entering the data manually. You can link it to an Excel spreadsheet or just copy and paste from Excel. But now this new feature in Leap allows you to link your model to the Leap Cloud data server. So this option over here, if I click Next, gives you access to a number of databases that are currently supported in that LCDS. So depending on the database that you select, you will see a number of filters or options that will help you navigate that specific database. So let's say I select the UN Energy. Um, here you would see the different series that are included within this database. For example, um, historical consumption of particular fuels and um, sectors. And then you can apply filters. Say I was looking for the specific and uh, the historical consumption of electricity in households. So you can filter by the sector, you can filter by the by the fuel, and that way it will pull the information from that particular um, database. Um, but going back to population, which is the key assumption that I just created, I could select the world population prospects from the UN, for instance. And from here, I have three different series or scenarios that are available. I'll choose the medium. And you'll notice that Leap is already smart enough to suggest or to know that the country that I'm developing this model for is Costa Rica, since I had specified that in the settings. So it basically links up to that UN population database and it extracts the data um, specifically for Costa Rica for the medium um, scenario. You can um, preview the data that is being imported over here as a chart. You can see a summary of the raw data that is being retrieved here, along with a summary of the metadata for that particular database. And you can see the expression that Leap is creating to link your model to that particular um, database. So if I click Finish, now it will also alert me that the unit that I had originally specified for this key assumption, which was, was, which was just number of um, people, um, can be updated to reflect the scale and the units used by this database. So I'll say yes, and it'll automatically update the scale to 1,000 people to match the data that I'm importing. So you can see here that this is the historical period, so in current accounts. Um, and then if I look at the baseline, you will also see the projection of the population in this particular country. Now, the first time that you link this up, Leap needs internet connection to gather the data. But once you have um, created the expression and pulled in the data, the data is stored in your local memory so you can continue to access the data even without internet access. But from time to time, Leap will check and it will, you know, um, 
phone home and we'll check whether there are any updates available. So in this example, um, if the UN were to release a new version of the population prospect, it would alert me and it will ask whether I want to update my data with the new um, projections that are now available. Um, so now let me go to the settings again and I will change the country to show you what happened. So if instead of working with a model for Costa Rica, I was working for um, uh, with a model for Indonesia. If I were to change the country in my settings, you will see that the expression itself has not changed, but the actual data, the underlying data has changed from, it was around 5 million people in Costa Rica. Now it's around 300 million people for Indonesia. So it knows that it's now pulling the data for Indonesia. If I go back to the LCDS screen, you will see that it's importing and it's updated uh, for the new country. This feature is also particularly useful when you're working with multi-region models, since uh, by specifying a single expression only once and using um, LEAP's inheritance features, you can at the same time um, extract the data for the multiple regions or countries um, within your model, which is pretty, pretty amazing. So let me finish this. Um, all right, so moving on to the next feature, which is the plugins. Let's say that I wanted now to develop a simple model for different uh, demand sectors in Indonesia. So instead of starting from scratch and trying to realize or to figure out what sort of structure I could create under my demand branches, I can now uh, search from a library of plugins, uh, which I can do through the plugins menu. I'll insert a plugin. Let me save this model first. And here I have a few plugins um, that I've developed for different uh, sectors, some of which follow more uh, top-down approaches, some of which have more of a bottom-up or more disaggregated approach. So I'll choose the services sector. And when it loads up, it'll show you first like a screen that looks like this. So on the right side, you can see a general summary of what this plugin actually does. So this one is a simple model of historical and projected energy demand and emissions from the services sector. You can see who developed this model and some description um, that, the, that the plugin developer wrote, including what are some of the inputs, the outputs, projection methods, etc. So this one in particular is using um, um, different inputs that are generally pulled from the LCDS, as I'll show you in a minute. But on the left side of the screen, you can also see what LEAP is doing. So it will make a first attempt or guess at where it needs to add the different branches or the different parts of this plugin. So initially, it's suggesting to add some branches under my demand branch and some other branches under key assumptions. And it's also offering to add any additional elements that are required to use these plugins uh, that don't yet exist in my original model. So things like um, additional fuels or scenarios, user variables that I haven't yet developed, it will automatically um, import them and create them for me as well. There are some more advanced features that you could use um, if you wanted to manually adjust the location and the connections um, with the plugin to adjust or to fit with your with the structure of your existing model. But we won't go into the details of that now. Just know that that is also available. So if I click next, basically this will import the plugin. And it will give me a summary of all of the branches and the different elements that were imported into my model, um, along with some additional instructions from the plugin uh, developer or author. And you will see now that the tree structure that I have over here contains a number of additional branches, which are at the moment are color coded. Um, to show that this uh, all came from that particular um, 
plugin. So this particular plugin contains, for instance, a GDP expression that is linked to the LCDS. So apart from importing the plugin itself, I'm already importing an expression that provides data specifically for Indonesia. And under the demand branches, I can also see that this model includes references to access um, the UN Energy Database, which is also providing me with country-specific data on historical energy consumption by fuel for the services sector for Indonesia specifically. And again, if you were working with a different country, LEAP would know which country you're working with as long as you specify that in the settings. So it would read um, the data for that particular country as well. Apart from containing um, historical energy use, it contains expressions that, that are um, used to project the energy demands over time. And it contains also a set of emission factors um, that are the default IPCC. So just by importing that plugin, you can very easily have a simple model with projections for the energy demand in the services sector, specifically for Indonesia. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the of, of the value of having this plugin architecture and also linking the plugin architecture with the um, databases and the access to those databases. And so as I said, we're developing a repository of plugins developed by SCI, but we also encourage other LEAP users and subject matter experts to create and to share um, their own plugins with the wider LEAP community. So if this is something that you would uh, like to contribute to, please also um, reach out. And the last thing that I want to show you is um, the translation. So let me show you how you would or how you could present this model to stakeholders in a different language. So this new version of Leap can now um, show the translation of not only the user interface, but also the data or the model itself. So because this is a model for Indonesia, if I wanted to translate all of the branches and the names of the fuels and scenarios to Indonesian, I can first create a new set, which basically will translate all of that, um, all of those names on the fly using Google Translate. So I click OK, and now it'll tell me that it's, it wants to use the translated sets. So now all of the names of the branches you see have been uh, translated using Google Translate. Um, of course, this might not be perfect, but it's a starting point and you can always edit the names and adjust the translations as needed. Now, because Indonesian is also one of the languages that is currently available for the user interface translations, it's asking me whether I also want to translate the user interface or the software, so I'll say yes. And now you will see that all of the messages in Leap as well as the menus um, and all of the options are available in Indonesia. So hopefully this can not only again improve accessibility to users um, around the world, but can also um, promote better engagement between modelers and stakeholders. And again, we're always open to volunteers that might want to review um, the translation of additional languages. And with that, I'll pass it over to Charlie again to wrap us up.